Hi everyone, it's Liz. I hope you're all doing well. I've seen loads of uh, YouTubers holding their microphones like this, so apparently this is a thing now. Not really sure why, uh, or even like attaching them to pencils and holding the pencil like a microphone. So if you can tell me why all the cool kids are doing that, I'd love to know. Um, I probably will clip this on in a bit because I'll be bored of holding it. So, this weekend I was meant to be getting tattooed, but uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, my tattooist had to cancel. So I decided I would do some sewing. However, I have about a million and one ideas floating around in my head and absolutely no idea what to pin down and actually sew. So I did a poll in my community tab on my channel and asked what you guys would like to see. So about five people replied and it seems like the most popular answer was cosy layers. So I think that's what we're going to go for today. So if you hang about, I'll get my notebook and we'll start looking at doing some designs. So these are my three designs that I have worked up. This one is a Henley style long sleeve t-shirt. Um, Henley is where you have this kind of placket down the middle and these wiggly lines are what I've chosen to depict some reverse cover stitch. This one is a long sleeve mock neck um, and I am going to make this one out of a stretch mesh and then this one that just looks like a black blob to be frank is going to be a long sleeve jersey t-shirt but I'm going to put some thumb holes in it so that it kind of comes down over my hands and also I don't have a white pencil, but what I'm planning to do is kind of make this what the cool kids were calling surgical about a year ago, where all the seams are done, um, it kind of looks like it's inside out, so all of the seams will be on the outside, and then I'll just be surging the edges instead of putting a, a band on, so all of this will be white um, overlocked edges. So I'll show you the pattern that I'm going to use. So I'll be using the True Bias Nico pattern today, which is a long sleeve mock neck top and dress combined in one pattern. And I have got all the pattern pieces printed out, but they're printed out as a dress. So as you can see, that's a pretty long piece of pattern there. So what I've done just for ease, is I've just traced the top or rather just cut the dress off and traced it so that it's all just one single pattern piece and I don't have to worry about folding the dress pattern up. You can see there I've got my top and my, my front and my back and I've got my long sleeve as well. So I'm not bothering with the mock neck piece for now because I'm going to start on the Henley and I'll show you the fabric that I'm going to be using. This is the waffle fabric that I'm using for the Henley. So you can see it's fairly nice and thick so it should be quite warm, make nice warm layers and this is perfectly suited to something like a Henley top which has the right vibe. This is the mesh that I'm going to use for the long sleeved sheer top. Nothing really special about it, it's just a very stretchy see-through mesh. And this is the jersey that I'll be using. Again, nothing particularly special about it, it's just a cotton lycra jersey, so I think it's like 95% cotton, 5% lycra or spandex, and that just gives it some really good recovery so that you can use it for quite tight form fitting things and it shouldn't lose its shape or bag out. So nothing particularly special about the last two fabrics, they're just kind of plain black fabrics but I'm hoping to elevate them with some nice details. Just starting off by ironing out any wrinkles in my pan so that doesn't affect the shape of the fabric when it's cut out. Let's talk through some of the pattern adjustments that I needed to do. I needed to retrace the front pattern piece so that I could adjust for the crew neck. 
I marked a centimetre down on the top and the shoulder seam and then I traced all around the neckline just to lower it a little bit. I've always found the arms to be a little bit tight on the Nikko, obviously because I've got enormous guns. So I looked up how to make a bicep adjustment in the fitting book and this is how it advised to do it. So basically you draw a long line from the top to the bottom and then angled out the shoulder notches or the armhole notches and you cut into it making sure that you leave the edges intact so that you can um, basically spread the pattern piece out to the amount that you need. I estimated I probably needed about 15 millimeters or a centimeter and a half more ease. Um, and then you just trace around the pattern piece, make sure that you redraw on any notches and then you're good to go. It's really important for me to mark on what changes I made to these new pattern pieces, otherwise when I come to make it again in a year, I will definitely have just forgotten. And then I made a start ironing out my fabric. I find it really easy to do this with a felt mat underneath the fabric on my cutting table rather than trying to drape it over an ironing board. Here I'm cutting out the stretch mesh for the first top that I'm going to make. Stretch mesh can be a little bit difficult to work with. It can move about quite a bit while you're cutting it. So it's a good idea to use a big cutting surface if you can. Then I moved on to cutting out the waffle fabric. I started trying to use my rotary cutter and realized it was taking quite a lot of pressure to go through both layers. So thankfully I've got these lovely electric scissors and I cut the rest of the pattern out using these which was an absolute breeze. And then I cut out the black cotton like jersey for the black overlocked top. This was the easiest of all of them. I find cotton lycra jersey quite easy to work with. At this point it was getting late so I decided to call it a night. Hey Google, turn the sewing room lights on. Sure, turning on three lights. Good morning. I've cut out all the pieces for my tops except for one piece which is the Henley placket. I'm a bit nervous about it. If any of you saw the sewing bee, the series that I was on, uh, it was a placket that nearly ruined me and I think it was episode five. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about this and I'm even more nervous that it's not actually in a pattern, I'm just kind of drafting it up myself. And I'm following a tutorial from Hey June Handmade. So I do have some good written instructions, but I'm gonna have to draft my own pattern piece and make my own decisions on measurements. So I'm just gonna measure myself and check out how long I think this placket wants to be. So I think about down to there would be right, and that's about nine inches. Well, it is nine inches, which is handy because my plastic ruler is nine and a half inches, so that's a good thing. I'm gonna work out how wide I need to make it, and I'll take you through drawing it up in, in a second. Okay, so I've brought my scrap bit of Swedish tracing paper over here. I always keep my off cuts of this in a drawer and to be honest they end up kind of scrumpled up but they always iron out fine so you know they're worth keeping around. Um, I often use the scraps for bra making and bra drafting as well so yeah keep these scraps there. They're worth having and they'll save you uh, a lot of money. Right so the tutorial that I'm following for the Henley Placket is a tutorial by Hey June Handmade, I think, yeah. So, it it's really comprehensive. It tells you how to draft the placket piece. And the first thing I have to figure out is how wide I'm gonna make the placket. So I am going to make it, as she suggests in the tutorial, three quarters of an inch. 
So I have to make a pattern piece that looks like this with a seam allowance on either side of three eighths of an inch and then however wide I want it to be and then however wide I want it to be times two in that section. So I'm going to do that now. Um, the length needs to be however long I want it to be plus an inch and a quarter and I presume that's so that you can make your little reinforced box at the bottom and finish off the bottom edge nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and draft that up now and I'll see you once that's done. If you haven't got one, I highly recommend getting one of these clear rulers. It just makes marking out straight line stuff really easy and you can see through it so you can line up your other lines with the line that you're drawing. I found a vertical scrap piece of the waffle fabric. So again, don't throw away your scraps because they come in handy later. I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to transfer the pattern markings. So that's the placket piece all marked up with some with some lines so that I can see where I'm meant to be folding and where it's going to attach to the main piece of the body. So all I'll need to do now is mark the centre line on the body and then we should be good to go. Time to clear away all my bits and pieces so I can get assembly. Full disclosure, I just managed to melt the armhole of the front piece when I was trying to press the shoulder seam. Um, I don't know if you can see that, maybe. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to, well, I'm in the process of unpicking the shoulder seam so that I can cut a new front piece. I'm really cross because I ironed this mesh without any problems when I was cutting it out. And then I turned the iron setting up so that I could iron my jersey and obviously didn't check that it was put back to where it should have been. So I'm gonna have to recut and um, that set me back a little bit of time, but never mind. Onwards and upwards. Unpicking mesh is probably one of the most horrible tasks ever. So after that horrendous ordeal was over, I could get on with putting the arms in the armholes. It's always amazing just how quickly a top goes from separate pieces to being very close to wear when you're just making it out of a stretch fabric. So all I need to do now is sew up the side seams and put the collar on. And then I think to finish the edges, I'm going to do a little rolled hem on the overlocker. And then that'll be that one finished really quick if I hadn't had to cut out an extra piece. But there we go. So I've attached the neckline now and I'm just giving it a press because if you don't believe me, that sewing is like 90% pressing, then you are wrong. Don't skip pressing, even on something like this. And if you think you're gonna melt the fabric, put a cloth over, because honestly, it just improves how it looks so, so much. So here's how she looks at the moment. Cute, no? So I think I'm just gonna go in and finish that raw edge off. I think I'll leave it actually, I, it's fine. And I don't want to risk it getting all wavy, I don't really want a lettuce hem on this, so I think I will just leave it and see how it holds up. As you can see from my outfit change, it's a, another day, and I am going to move on to the black jersey top with the 
exposed overlocker seams and I'm hoping this one should be a fair bit more straightforward. Since I started filming this video I've seen a Instagram post from True Bias who made the Nico pattern that they are developing a tutorial on how to hack the Nico to have a crew neck. So if you are interested in making your own version with a, a crew neck you might want to go and check that out. Uh, at the time of filming it hasn't been released yet but I'll be checking that out myself when it is. So I really want to get these tops finished by the weekend so I better just crack on with it. I spent a little bit of time thinking about what I wanted to do. I had to split the sleeve into three pieces so that I had seams for the exposed overlocking. So I cut a new piece for the bottom as well so that I had something that would go over my hands and be a place for the thumb hole. Then I practiced how I wanted my overlocked edges to look and I settled on a short stitch length. And to sew it all together I used a triple stitch. Now I have both sleeves sewn up together so that's the top section, middle section and bottom section. I've overlocked around all the edges because I realised that in order to leave myself a thumb hole I'm going to need a finished edge. So I have overlocked these edges and I'm going to sew the seam using a triple straight stitch on my sewing machine. I'm probably going to have to overlock the edges of the sides of the body as well so that it looks continuous, otherwise it's going to look a bit odd. So this is where we're at. I've overlocked all the edges and the sleeve is in three pieces and I've done the neckline. I can't quite reach and keep the camera far enough away. I've pinned the shoulder seam and I've just laid the sleeve against the body to see whether I really think it needs the armhole to be done in this uh, overlocking but actually I'm kind of liking the balance of the shoulder seam and the armhole not being white overlocked I'm a little bit concerned about it just looking like a top that's on inside out so I'd like to keep some of the seams hidden on the inside so I think that's what I'm going to do. So we're two tops down and one left to go and I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit daunted by this one. If you have ever seen series six of the Great British Sewing Bee which was my season you'll know that the placket is the thing that nearly knocked me out in sports week. So yeah, I've been putting it off, I've put it off till last, but I can't put it off anymore. I need to get this video done, which if you could see the state of me at the minute, it's because uh, this is a weeknight, so I've finished work and I've come into the sewing room to do this video and I'm just so tired and I can't even think about putting makeup on and stuff, so you're getting me in all my unmade up glory, but we're gonna crack on, so let's crack on. Okay, so I have made the top up mostly. I've done the shoulder seams and the side seams. And the more I look at this placket, the more I've just decided I don't think I can live with it. So I think I'm going to be unpicking everything and uh, probably recutting a new front piece because once that's cut, it's kind of not really servable and I think I'll try 
a slightly different placket method. I think I'm going to practice it on the bottom of the front piece first though um, and see if I can get it to work but this kind of all-in-one placket hmm, it's just it's really warping all the fabric around the bottom and I think that that's generally what plackets of that kind of construction do but it's just far far more noticeable in a fabric that has all these vertical and horizontal lines you can really see the warping so I think it's down tools for tonight and try again tomorrow after my disastrous first attempt at the placket I have absolutely butchered the front piece practicing how to do it and I think I might have cracked it so I'm going to show you what I've done. So the first attempt at the placket I made with the same fabric as the main fabric of the top and the edges were turned under but the issue with that is that it just felt really bulky. Looking at it again I'm actually not convinced it's all that bad. I think that this blue line running a bit skew with has drawn the eye in a, in a bit of a bad way. It's probably okay, probably could have gotten away with it. But what I think I prefer is I tried it again with jersey as the placket facing instead. And it's a lot thinner, it sits a lot flatter. And instead of turning the edges under, I've overlocked them so that they just lay flat. And I think this is a nicer method to use. You can see I've done another one there. I think this was the final version that I did. So I'm going to go with this. It won't have black top stitching. I'll be using a grey colour for that. But I think I'm just going to crack on now and hopefully try and get this top finished. And then we'll go to the reveal. After the stress of making the placket, I had to cut a new neckband piece. So I measured the neckline and multiplied that by 0.85, which gives you a band that's slightly shorter, about 85% of the original. And then I basted it to the neckline. Then I gave it a press flat. And I thought as a nice little touch, I would cover the back neck seam using a strip of jersey. Once I'd stitched that in place, it was time to give it a final press and then I could attach the poppers. I really wasn't sure what colour poppers I wanted to go for. I have a nice pack that has lots of multicoloured poppers in it. I couldn't choose between black, white or silver so I just laid them out and finally settled on silver. Here I'm practicing putting some poppers on some scrap fabric before I start adding them to my garment and realize that I'm going to absolutely ruin it. And finally all the poppers are on and they all thankfully line up perfectly.
there we go, all three tops are finally finished. You might have noticed by how many outfit changes there were during this video that this one in particular took a long time. I can only sew on weekends and uh, bits here and there on an evening, so sometimes it takes me quite a while to complete a garment, even when it's a fairly simple one. And for this video, I think I just bit off a bit more than I could chew. I'm super happy with the sheer top and the black and white serger core top. A little bit more lukewarm on this one. I think the neckline, I probably didn't cut the band short enough, so unfortunately we've got a little bit of an issue with gaping around the neck. This placket was a bit of a nightmare process, to be honest, but that's probably because I jumped in without having ever really practiced one before. The colour, uh, I'm also a bit lukewarm on, usually I go for darker colours and this is quite a light grey by my standards, but maybe it'll grow on me. But I love the fabric, it's really warm and toasty, I think the placket came good in the end, it's just maybe I need to work up the energy to take this neckband off and refit it at some point, but that is a job for a couple of months into the future because frankly, I've had enough of looking at and sewing on this top. Anyway, if you got to the end of this video, well done. I'm super proud of you. Please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around these parts and you want to stick around and watch a few more videos. And I will see you next time.